dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,300 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring John Lund in A Place in the Sun, the United States Army and the United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, Wendell. And greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where each week your motion picture favorites appear in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is that capable and popular actor, John Lund who provides one of his best dramatic portrayals in a play titled A Place in the Sun. We'll have our curtain for Act One in just a moment. But first, here is Wendell Niles with an important message. Today's regular Army and Air Force career men are proud of their jobs. They are proud because their work is so important to their country. Theirs is a patriotic career. But an Army or Air Force career is also one of personal satisfaction and betterment. The soldier and airman is receiving valuable vocational training. He enjoys his work and he's bettering himself through education and other benefits provided by the Army and Air Force. Now, once again, our producer. It's curtain time, and here's Act One of A Place in the Sun, starring John Lund as Philip Schaefer, M.D. It's pretty as a picture, the little town of Crested Butte. Just sort of taking things easy on a warm summer day. That white frame cottage down there, sitting back of the elm trees, that young Doc Schaefer's place. Philip Schaefer, M.D. He's a hometown boy, you know. Went away to school a while ago, came back a doctor. He has his office there, been taking care of the people of Crested Butte quite a while. On the particular morning our story begins, Mrs. Mentone, the cleaning lady, enters the front door of Doc Schaefer's white frame cottage. Yes, Mrs. Mentone. Oh, good morning, Dr. Schaefer. Good morning, Mrs. Mentone. Things are they seem so quiet when I come in. I'm afraid maybe you go out on a call. Oh, no, no. It's been very slow around here this morning. Not a thing doing. Absolutely nothing. Mm-hmm. Hello? Hello, Dr. Schaefer. It's Virginia. Yes, Bert, what is it? It's my wife, Elsie, Dr. Schaefer, the test. She's worrying so. Oh? Put Elsie on, would you please, Bert? Yes. Now, what is it, Elsie? What are you afraid of? Whether it's going to be a girl or a boy? I'm, I'm just afraid, Doc. Elsie, instead of spending all your time being afraid, why not think how wonderful it's going to be to hold your own baby in your arms? Yes, Doc. To watch him grow, to hear him say his first word, sprout his first tooth, to have him hug you and love you. You always make me feel so good. Oh, now, pull yourself together, Alfie. And be careful or Bert will be having that baby instead of you. Then I have to send up to the city for a specialist. I couldn't handle the case myself. All right, Doc. Goodbye. Goodbye, Alfie. Well, Mrs. Mentone, how are you today? Oh, Doc, I tell you how I feel. I'm to feel just the light of the sun sees a shine through me today. Well, that's good. How's your husband? I'm a just come from the main hospital this morning. My Paul, he's a sit up in bed for the first time. Oh, Doc, we are so grateful to you. We kind of never pay you. Now, don't worry about paying me, Mrs. Mentone. But uh, what about Lane Hospital? How are you working that out? Oh, I'm a scrub of the floors there in the afternoon to pay the hospital $600. You go down there morning and afternoon? Most every day. 30 miles each way? Oh, it's not so far. But Paul will be coming home soon. What do you do then? Well, I just... Uh... Excuse me. Hello? Hello, Doc. Cass Thomas. Yes, Cass. Just wanted to tell you, my liver never felt better in my life. Well, good, Cass. That's real progress. I knew if you just put that apple jack away, you'd be fine. Yeah, well, you might say, Doc, I'm a whole man again. Well, that's fine, Cass. Yeah, well, Doc, guess I was doing a little wishful thinking. I was wondering, since my system has responded in such a way, well, I was just thinking, it's a mighty hot weather, and a man does get a thirst up. 
Now, Cass, what was that noise, Cass? Just a little wishful thinking going down the drain, Doc. Goodbye. <laughs> Cass Thomas has made the grade. Oh, Cass Thomas, he's a good man, Doc. But now tell me, Mrs. Mentone, what are you going to do when Paul comes home? You can't be working over at Lane Hospital 30 miles away. You'll have to take care of him. Yes, I know that, but I'm in a worry. Something she's a workout. I know that. Well, now I think I should get a busy, huh? Mrs. Mentone, that sunshine truly does shine clear through you. Now, who's that? Uh, a doc. A doc, she thought. What is it, Hank? Doc, I'm flung out of breath. From clear from Dawson Star. There's been a terrible accident, Doc. Ooh. What happened? Uh, a couple of city folks ran slam bang into Fred Fox hay rack. And the fellow driving was out in cold in the cell of Popkin, and I'm bleeding bad. Well, let's get down there. Come along, Mr. Mentone. Uh, yeah. And there's a girl with a fella, too, but she ain't hot much. Just might shook up. You better come running. I'll get my bag. Meet me out in front. We better take the Model A. Yeah, okay, Doc. I'll be getting started. <laughs> Here's the doc now, Miss Cartwright. He'll fix Paul right up. Oh, thank heaven somebody's here. I'm Dr. Schaefer, Miss Cartwright. Mrs. Mentone, take her into the store. I don't want to leave my father. I think it'll be better, Miss. Uh, just to come along, my dear. The doc, he's a know what best. We go right to the store. I'm going to get you a drink of water. Oh, what's the matter with him, doc? He ain't dead, is he? No. Hey, quick. Yes, doc? We've got to move this man up to my place fast as we can, or we'll never pull him through. <laughs> my father. How is he? Miss Cartwright, I don't like to tell you this. Well, what? What? Your father's suffering from a severe fracture and concussion. I think he should be operated on immediately. Well, can't we get him out of this? Out of here to a hospital? The nearest hospital is 30 miles away. I'm afraid I'll have to operate here. You? Yes. But you're nothing but a country doctor. That's right. You're no, I'm not going to let my father take the chance. They can fly a surgeon down from Pittsburgh. I'm afraid there isn't time. There is... Well, it's your decision, Miss Cartwright. Under the circumstances, I have to say yes. Very well. Hank. Uh, yeah, Doc? Put some more water to boil on the stove and see that it boils good. Also, start scrubbing your hands so you can help me with the anesthetic. And hurry it up, Hank. Yeah, okay, Doc. Mrs. Mentone. Yes, the Doc. Send someone over after Ida Winters and tell her to come a-flying. I'll go over and get her myself. Who's she? Ida Winters had a couple of years of practical nursing, Miss Cartwright, and she's right handy. Can I do anything? Yes, you can pray for the best. When you're through doing that, you'd better see how many of those dominoes there on the table you can stack up without them falling down. It helps sometimes. <laughs> Long torso, Sider. Now a sponge. Careful, Hank. You're letting the ether drip too fast. There, that's better. Much better. Now the scalpel. Doctor? It's all over, Miss Cartwright. What do you mean? Your father must be a very strong man. He held up remarkably. And I think he's got a very good chance. Oh, God bless you, Dr. Schaefer. I have your blessing now. Is that it? I'm really very sorry for the way I acted. Well, I guess we were all a little wrought up. You're very kind. Could I see my father now? He's still under the anesthetic. When will we know for sure about him? Oh, weeks or ten days. He can't be moved, of course. No. I was thinking, we have a spare room here in the house. You're welcome to it. I don't know what to say. Thank you. I understand you called Pittsburgh for your father's physician. I thought it would be best. You don't mind. Oh, no, no, not at all. The idea is to get your father well. You uh, want that room? Yes, I'd be very grateful. I'll have Mrs. Mentone straighten it up for you. You'll want to be near your father. Father, do you know what? You're actually sitting up. Sitting up? Why, well, I'm trucking out of this room any time now. And the way you ate that lunch. Well, I'll slip these dishes out of here. 
I want you to have a nice long rest this afternoon. Well, if I keep on thinking about trucking out of here, I'll tire myself, so I'll have to sleep. <laughs> All right. Bye now, darling. Well, how's the patient? Oh, he's wonderful. He sat up today for the first time. Put those dishes down right here. Well, that's great news. Isn't it? Oh, Phil, I'm so grateful. I've just got to do something about it. You know, I was thinking, you were telling me about your cleaning lady, Mrs. Mentone, and what a struggle she's had. I was thinking I'd like to pay her husband's hospital bill. Well, that's a grand idea. Would you drive me over to the hospital and back tonight? Would you have time? It's a date. <laughs> Mentone will never forget you for that. It's such an easy thing for me to do. Well, there are the lights, if you can call them lights, of Crested Butte. Yeah, there they are. Lots of excitement these days, now that your father's well enough to see all of his famous industrialist friends. They've all been down. You know, the Pittsburgh doctors all raved to my father about your work. Oh, well, we country doctors have a trick or two, you know. They all seem to think you were buried here in this little town. Say, you know, it's still early. Yeah, so it is. Maybe we ought to make an evening of it. I'm game. What'll we do? Well, uh, we could go to a dance. Well. If this were Saturday night, we could. Oh, you dance here Saturday night, rain or shine, do you? Mm-hmm. Fascinating place. How about a movie? Hmm? Well, we could go to a movie. Except the movies are on Wednesday and Friday. And today happens to be Thursday. Oh, well, maybe we could play a couple of fast games of checkers. We could. Isn't there anything interesting about this village? Why, certainly. This is a highly romantic place. It is. Hmm. Tell me more. Oh, I need a full moon and a couple of stars to kind of help me along. Props. I'll wait for that full moon, Phil. All right. And now I'll tell you what. Funny thing about this town, you can get a soda any night in the week. We pause briefly from our story, A Place in the Sun, starring John Lund, for an important message from our government. Everybody looks up to a pilot. And when he's a pilot with the U.S. Air Force, he draws additional respect as a man doing an important work for his country. What this is leading up to, men, is this. Next month, an Air Force Aviation Cadet Pilot Training Class starts. And there's still a chance you can qualify for that class. It's a year of stiff training, but it's the best aviation training in the world. These men who complete the course are commissioned as officers in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Some of them win regular Air Force commissions. All of them, upon graduation, receive up to $336 a month. A career as pilot in Uncle Sam's Air Force is a modern and exciting one. Find out the requirements for aviation cadet pilot training, men. If you can qualify now, you may be in the next class. You'll find application blanks at your nearest Air Force base or recruiting station. rises on Act Two of A Place in the Sun, starring John Lund as Dr. Philip Schaefer. Well, the remarkable recovery of the prominent Pittsburgh industrialist, C.J. Cartwright, in the little town of Cresta Butte, turned out to be quite a feather in Dr. Philip Schaefer's cap, an added ray of sunshine in a sunshiny little town. Philip and Glory have seen a lot of each other. As our scene opens, Glory is walking out to meet Philip for an evening together, when she is stopped by Mrs. Mentone, the cleaning lady, who is very profuse in her thanks for Gloria's generosity. Miss Cartwright? Yes? Oh, can I speak with you just one moment, please? Well, I'm not know how to begin to thank you for what you've done. Dr. Schaefer, he's a tell me. Mrs. Menton, it was really a very small thing that I did. Oh, no. You've given me a chance. Now I'm a god of my poor home. Oh, someday, perhaps, I'm going to have a chance to repay you. You know... That's what I hope and pray. I'm in rather a hurry, Mrs. Mentor. Oh, excuse me, my dear. I'm so sorry. I'm a no mean to keep you. And a bless you, my dear. Good evening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello, Phil. 
Shall I keep you waiting? Oh, no. I ran into Mrs. Mentone. She was so effusive, I could hardly get away from her. Well, naturally, she wanted to thank you. But she didn't have to take a weekend doing it, did she? When I'm hurrying to be with you? All right, what do we do? Where do we go? <laughs> we have such a choice. The stork? Mm-mm. Uh, 21? Mm-mm. Hey, this is Wednesday night, isn't it? Uh-huh. Movies. We can see a movie. Well, let's go. Our car is waiting. Well, here we are. Say, it doesn't look like it's open. Say, it sure doesn't. This is Wednesday, isn't it? I think so. Wait a minute. There's Jim Hayes. He runs the theater. Jim. Hey, Jim. Hello, Doc. How is it? Better with you and with me, I hope. Uh, this is Miss Cartwright, Jim. Howdy, Miss Cartwright. Hello. How come you're not open? Haven't you heard? We had two inches of rain below us. Cloud burst, followed by a flash flood ten miles down the road. I got two Mickey Mouses, one travelogue, and a picture called The Great Drought. Just the other side of the washout in the road. Oh, that's too bad. It ain't the worst of it. No? I could operate all right, even without the pictures. But the fellow who's legging up the prince is also bringing up a popcorn. Oh, no. Well, I mean, good night to you. Good night. I mean, good night. This is really thrilling. Movie night comes and still no movie. Well, there's still those checkers. No. Let's just ride. All right. Say, wait a minute. What? The moon. Oh, you see it too. Mm-hmm. And it's full and simply surrounded by stars. How interesting. Well? Well, I think now that the time has come, I need more than a moon, Gloria, to tell you what I want to tell you. Oh, that isn't fair at all. You see, I... I want to tell you that I love you. Well, I think it's about time you did. You do? Well, uh, there's another thing. I want you to marry me. All right. I'll marry you. You will? Say... That moon's better than I thought it would be. You're not bad yourself. I think I'd better pull this car over to the side of the road so I can kiss you. I think that's a wonderful idea. Well, Mr. Cartwright? Well, Phil, I guess I can say this much. That the prospect of having you for my son-in-law is one of the most pleasant I've ever had in my life. There's just one thing, and believe me, I don't say this as a prospective father-in-law to a prospective son-in-law, but with as much interest in you as in my daughter. Yes? Phil, you're unquestionably a very brilliant surgeon, and personally, I'd say that you're wasting yourself buried out here in the country. Well, I don't think so, Mr. Cartwright. The folks around Cresta Butte are human beings just like they are in the city. They get just about as sick and just about as often. I realize that, too, but there's one thing you should understand. Gloria was raised in luxury. Everything she ever wanted. Oh, I'm not saying it spoiled her. But it would be pretty difficult for her to live away from all that. I wish you'd see your way clear to come to Pittsburgh and establish your practice. Well, I... I hadn't counted on that at all. But if that's what Gloria wants, well, that's what it'll be. Turn around so I can see you better. Well, I certainly don't feel wonderful. Some of my old patients could only see me now. Gloria, I look like a freak. Well, shame on you, Phil, for insulting my husband. You're talking about the man I love, you know. I know, Gloria, but why do I have to get all dressed up like this? Morning coat, striped pants. Well, darling, you're not back in the country anymore. A doctor has to dress here in Pittsburgh. All right. Oh, it's just getting used to it that's hard. Now, you better run along or you'll be late. Yeah, and wouldn't that be a catastrophe? Mrs. Van Cleve would have another half hour to dream up some more imaginary aches and pains. Oh, hello, Mrs. Delane. Oh, such a lovely party, Gloria, such a lovely party. Mrs. Delane, I want you to meet my husband. Oh, so this is the handsome Dr. Schaefer. How do you do, Mrs. Delane? Mom. Aye, they certainly grow them tall and strong back there in the country, don't they? You know, Doctor, I'm going to call on you soon. I've had such a 
mysterious time at my back. Well, I was at the opera the other night, and I could barely lift my glasses to my eyes. Oh, excuse me, Gloria. There's Francine. Oh, delightful meeting you, Dr. Schaefer. Yes, delightful. Phil, don't do that. Don't do what? I'm very tired and extremely bored. Well, now, isn't that just fine? And what's more, I think I'm going to bed. Phil, no. Good night, my dear. I'm sorry, but I just can't stand it any longer. <laughs> Without saying good night to our guest. What are you doing? I'm packing a suitcase, Gloria. I'm going back to Crested Butte. Oh, Phil, what are you talking about? Back with the country people. If it's because of something I've said. Oh, no, no. It's many other things. It's a fundamental law that oil and water don't mix. You can't make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. I'm a country doctor. That's my place in the sun. That's where I belong. But, Phil, I can't understand you. What in the world is there in Cresta Butte, a theater that runs two nights a week when it runs? No place to go, nothing to do. What is there? Oh, I don't understand. Well, I can't tell you in a word or two. And I can't go on here. At least you'll have to admit that I tried it your way. I'm sorry it didn't work. Well, it would have if you hadn't been so stubborn and set in your ways. Are you coming with me? No, Phil. I'm not coming with you. Morning, Mrs. Mentone. Oh, it's just like old times now you're back. Well, thank you, Mrs. Mentone. Oh. Anybody at home? Oh, come in, Cass. Come in. Just got the news you were back in town, Doc. Always get everything three weeks late. Oh, you do? Uh-huh. Yeah. Welcome home. Thank you. How are you feeling, Cass? Perfect. Switched from Applejack to buttermilk. Made my liver very happy. Also, the dairy people here. Good enough. Hello, Mrs. Mentone. Oh, hello, Cass. It's so nice we got the doc back, huh? Yeah, I was just saying that. And say, Doc, this is for you. Wow, thank you. Uh, what is it? A bottle of fine old sherry. Oh, but the cat. You know the doc. He's in out of touch any wine to drink. That's so, Doc? Well, perhaps on an extra special occasion. <laughs> That's just what I was thinking. Say, there's a car in the drive. Yeah. Yeah, and I think I recognize it. Excuse me. Gloria. I've come back, Phil. So I see. And I've come back crawling, Phil. Oh, don't say that. But it's true. I couldn't stand it a minute longer being away from you. I had an awfully pretty little speech prepared. Oh, now, Gloria. Now I can't remember a word of it. Oh, please, Gloria. Here, here, take my handkerchief. Thank you. Now, come on, put yourself together. All right. Oh, Phil, I've been an awful fool. I made an awful mistake. I didn't realize how empty my life was until you left. Phil, please give me another chance. Please take me back. You've never really been away. Oh, Phil. Now dry your eyes. Yes, Phil. Fixed? Mm-hmm. Fixed. Hey, Cass. Cass! Yeah, Doc? Open up that bottle of sherry, Cass. The occasion is here. <laughs> the curtain falls concluding our story, A Place in the Sun. John Lund, our star, will be back for a curtain call following this message from Wendell Nye. Here is news for you veterans who served with an anti-aircraft artillery outfit. The Army now has some good jobs open for you AAA men with special skills. For instance, radar crewmen are needed. Also, AA gun crewmen, fire control electricians, range section operators, and many others. Yes, if you have served with anti-aircraft units in any of the armed forces, you are eligible for this great offer. And there are more than 20 Army specialties for which you can qualify. Make a special note of this. You will be enlisted in a grade appropriate to your skill and length of service. This means many of you may get your old grade back. Worth looking into, isn't it? 
you'll find complete details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Why don't you stop down there today and find out if you can qualify? Don't put it off. Do it right away. Now, once again, our star, John Lund, and our producer. One of the most talked of, and I might add, fastest rising young actors in the motion picture world is our proudly we hailed star, John Lund. Now I'd like to have you meet him informally. Well, thank you, C.P. Good to be back on one of your shows again. You know, radio is an old love of mine. That's right, it is. And there's something about radio music I recall. Oh, I know it's coming. <laughs> John, didn't Lanny Ross sing one of your tunes? Yes, he did. He and the chorus sang it on a network. But it was the worst lyric I have ever heard. Here's a line from it. Won't be blue while there's a red, white, and blue. <laughs> Let's talk about radio. In New York, you did a lot of script writing for an agency and wrote some fine shows. I know that. Well, it was a great experience, and I was fortunate to have that opportunity. You did Billy Burke's Fashions and Rations. Mm-hmm, for 26 weeks. And I remember Cheers from the Camps, the one Ted Husing emceed. Well, that was an hour variety show that traveled to the camps. And then came Broadway and The Hasty Heart, which moved you right into Hollywood. And there was a fortunate coincidence between the New York stage and Hollywood pictures. How's that? Well, in New York, I worked for one of the finest dramatic teams, Howard Lindsay and Russell Krauss. And in Hollywood? In Hollywood, Charles Brackett and Billy Wilder. Who produced and directed A Foreign Affair. That's your latest picture at Paramount, isn't it? Yes. It's... A really brilliant picture. And an unbeatable team. Yes, I was fortunate. But here we are talking about me. I, I see time's running close before you remind me. Let's hear what you have in store for your listeners next week. Next week, John, and ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ruth Warwick stars in a bright comedy, Romance Incorporated, and shows her father, Wall Street's outstanding broker, a thing or two about stocks and bonds and romance. You'll enjoy it. A top play, Bill, and I'll be listening. Thanks, and ask me again, will you? Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, John. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Ruth Warwick in Romance Incorporated. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. John Lund appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. Music is under the direction of Eddie Scavana. The program is rebroadcast the armed forces overseas to the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Remember, proudly we hail next week presents... Ruth Warren. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.